Hey guys, it's me, Sylvia Acevedo again, you know, from Uses Me, back at you with a really awkward intro because no matter what, I don't think I'll ever be comfortable in front of a camera. But I'm super excited to have you guys here because today, well, this is edited months later. I had a lot of things going on, but regardless, this is a Iwo Jima painting I did for uh, my detachment auction that we did for our Marine Corps Ball. It was supposed to be a fundraising event before it got canceled due to COVID. So right now, all I'm going to be doing is using a projector. I'm cheating. I know all the artists are probably yelling at me, but I'm using this projector just to help quicken the process, okay? I can do it on my own, but I decided not to. I decided to cut some corners, and the projector was one of them. So. I got it turned on, I'm positioning it against the wall that I'm going to be having the canvas against, okay? So I place the canvas up how I want it to be when I'm painting. Um, the goal would be try to have it like as close to 90 degrees as possible with the image, so that way it's the most proportionally correct. Then I move the image up and down on the canvas to make sure that all the marines and the sailor and the tip of the flagpole all fit within that canvas. Then now I'm going to be using a Sharpie and I'm just outlining. I'm doing this with a Sharpie instead of a pencil because I do plan on putting a couple coats down of white paint and I want the lines thick enough to be seen through that while I continue to paint the marines. So besides how I'm painting or what I'm painting it for, I just want to share a few facts from the Battle of Iwo Jima because it feels wrong not to. This scene was photographed by Joe Rosenthal and is actually the second flag raising. The individuals from this photo are Marines Sergeant Strength, Corporal Block, PFC Sousley, PFC Hayes, and PFC Gagon, and lastly, a Navy Corpsman Bradley, all from Echo Company, 2nd Battalion, 28th Marines. This battle lasted 36 days and we had over 26,000 casualties, which is more than all the troops the Japanese had in that battle. Here I am creating these lines and boom, my friend comes in. Hawk, I miss you. Thank you for hanging out with me. I'm really fortunate to have good friends that are willing to hang out with me even though I'm focusing on my own thing. So as I'm drawing these lines, you may notice, you know, looking back, that these stripes seem very narrow. At the moment, yeah, that's not what went through my mind. So here I am, I finished up these lines and I'm like, wait up. Okay, I count them all out and I realize this shit only covers like a third of the freaking canvas. So now I'm like, oh man, where'd I mess up? Okay, I go back to my phone, I'm looking back at this web page again and I'm like, how did I do this? What happened? Okay, so. I figure out where I went wrong. Um, yeah, so for some reason when I was putting in the measurements, I put uh, three feet, or I don't know how exactly I did it, okay? But pretty much, I think it assumed the three feet was going to be the length of the flag. And so then, you know, the little system that the website uses assumed that the width was gonna be far shorter. So it made the stripe shorter, but. I fixed it. Now I'm redoing these lines. I do one side of the canvas, then I go to the other, fill out the other, and shortly I'm going to meet in the middle. After that's all done, you have your friend hold it, you place this canvas back down, and now I'm putting that paint that I talked about over it, and I'm just spraying it over the canvas. And as you can see, you can still kind of see those lines through it. I didn't show me painting the red, you know, um, but it is what it is. And now I'm painting the Marines and Sailors silhouette. So that's why I wanted the American flag in the background because I was planning on just doing the uh, Marines, Sailor, and the flag in black.
For those who don't know too much about the Battle of Iwo Jima, the Japanese dug tunnels and machine gun bunkers within the island which made it harder for Marie to see where the enemy was shooting from to return fire. The Japanese even waited after the initial landing for the beaches to fill up with more troops before firing. This allowed the Japanese to be able to aim anywhere and to be hitting American troops. Regardless of the Japanese planning, Americans were still able to win that battle. And for me, as a Marine, it propels me further knowing our legacy and not wanting to be the one that detracts from that high standard built. While painting the silhouette, I'm really, I'm really taking my time to make sure that I'm doing this as accurately as possible. You know, already throughout all these steps, it's kind of like the foundation, you know, if your foundation's a little messed up, you know, maybe when you're doing this, you're going to be a little bit more careless, you're going to mess up again, and all these mistakes will build on top of each other. And then you're going to look at this image and you're going to be like, what were you even trying to paint? I don't even know, like, is this abstract? And it's just, it's pretty bad, you know, <laughs> especially when I hope that the unit can sell this piece so we can raise money for the auction. Now I just work my way up and don't be afraid to move canvases. Don't be afraid to like move and utilize the materials you have to its fullest potential. Don't always think like, oh, I have to do something different. No, you make that stuff work for you. So I'm always moving around the canvas. I'm always, you know, doing something different with my brushes. And that's just to help me, you know, be better about this. And I took a step back, I realized like, oh shoot, some people are missing their arms. So I go back just to finish drawing those in um, different areas right by um, their arm and their torso. I missed that part. So I'm drawing that in and now I'm just going to fill in these smaller areas. The areas that like, can, the areas that could be easily painted over. So I didn't want to miss them. So I thought I would color them in black first because if I cover it in red or blue, you can easily see where the black paint was before. You would need multiple layers of paint to cover up black. So that is why it's important to paint those small areas first with black. So that way, in case you do go too fast, go over a corner, start overlapping some things, you could still go back and you could fix it because you know exactly what was actually supposed to be there. After that, now I use a wider brush and I'm covering more of these solid areas. Uh, it just quickens everything. Um, yeah. So this is just a personal preference, but I hate it when the sides of canvases are bare. You know, I I always try to paint them, coat them with something because I think it just looks better, but that's just me. You can do whatever you want. Here, I was just going back and forth, making sure I didn't miss anything with the black. And, you know, I realized uh, the red wasn't as dark as I wanted it to be. So now I'm doing another coat of red just to bring out a darker color or a darker hue of red. And I'm also trying to get closer to like the nooks and crannies because now that I painted all that black, right? 
now I'll know where the black goes. So if I cover it up with a little bit of red, it's okay because I can still see the black through the red and then I can do like another touch up, another, you know, pass over near the end. And now because I didn't record the red, I felt bad. So I want to show you how I mix blue and do not, I'm telling you, do not sleep on those like Tostitos chips jars. Like, I'm not sure if it's just the Hispanic in me, but you can always use old food containers for storage. Always. So, if I don't have the exact blue I wanted, I'm not going to go out and buy a different shade of blue. No, I'm going to start mixing it. I already own too much paint as is. So, I put that in there. Um, I wanted it to go further, so I added some Floetrol. And now I'm just going to add a little bit of water, so that way it kind of thins it out a little bit. And now all you gotta do is just keep mixing it um, until all that paint is mixed. And then you can decide, hey, is it dark enough? Is it light enough? What do I need to add? And then you just add to it. And there's no problem with that, you know? And then here I am making a mistake where I start to throw some paint down and I'm realizing like, oh, it, that's way too light. And then you just see me go back, add a little bit more of a darker paint, start splashing that back on there, and I'm like, okay, I think this is better. And here we are. This is when painting starts getting a little bit more exciting. When you kind of see more of like the possibility, right? You're starting to see the finish line. You're like, wow, that is an American flag in the background. And wow, look at that silhouette, you know? So this is when things start getting a little exciting and you're just ready to get this done with. So here I am, I just started throwing blue paint all over that thing. And as you can see, everything I've been saying, you can see, you can really see the black that's underneath even the two or three coats of blue paint. And so now I'm able to paint over that. Here I am fixing up where the red overlapped the black and it's just that final pass over, right? Guys, we are approaching the end. I'm glad you guys are here and hopefully you all enjoy tagging along. If you did, hit that like button and let me know down below what your favorite part was. If you care to see more, subscribe and follow me on Instagram at muses.me. And, you know, thank you guys again for watching. Hope to see you guys next time.